Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name's Jen and today I want to walk you through how I designed a DIY drip irrigation system for my Garden Tower 2. Now if you've watched my previous video comparing the features of the Garden Tower 2 and the Greenstock Vertical Planter, you'll notice one of the big differences is that the Garden Tower 2 does not come with a watering system. If you want to check out that comparison video, I'll put a link to it right up here in the corner of the screen. Now although it doesn't come with a watering system, I just decided I was going to design one myself using some drip irrigation parts. Now I'm not claiming my design is perfect by any means, but I am hoping that it'll get your creative mind going and maybe give you a couple ideas about how you can implement something similar in your own yard. Let's get into it. Let me talk through some of the main things I was going for with this design. Now this viewing angle right here is the same you would get from sitting on my, my lanai. I wanted something discreet so that you wouldn't really see it or be bothered by seeing it from this view. So I wanted to make sure I could bury as much of the line as I could and then I wanted to bring the supply up along the back side of the garden tower. Another thing I wanted to do was make sure that I could retain the swivel functionality of the garden tower. This is something the garden tower needs because of sunlight. Um, like in my particular spot, this side will get the morning sun and this side will get the afternoon sun. So I wanted to still be able to spin it so I could make sure that my plants would get the right amount of sunlight. I also really wanted to make sure that this was an automatic watering system. I've noticed that most of the time when I fail in the garden, it has to do with watering and me not keeping up with the watering needs. So something like a drip system connected to a timer is definitely the preferred way to go for me. I planted strawberries in here and I know once they start fruiting, they really get thirsty and I want to make sure that I can get the most out of my strawberry plants. Let me talk through the full system design starting from the very beginning. About a year ago, I wanted to add reclaimed water to this very long raised bed behind me. I also wanted to be able to control that separately. So what I did was I modified the valve manifold near my reclaimed water source on the side of the house. I added a valve for this long raised bed and I went ahead and trenched and buried PVC pipe to bring the reclaimed water source up to the front of this raised bed right here. And then I also had enough forethought, thankfully, to trench that PVC pipe all the way in front of this raised bed, all the way along it like this. And then I didn't know what I was going to do with it yet at the time. So what I did was I brought it up out of the ground and then I put a shutoff valve and just kept it in the off position for the past year. Now, fast forward a year and I finally knew what I was going to do with it. So all I had to do was trench out this much smaller portion in the corner of the yard and then cut into that PVC pipe and redesign the path that the PVC and the shutoff valve took. So then once I backfilled the dirt on top of here, I added this stepping stone for the garden tower to sit on. So the PVC is actually running underneath the stepping stone. Then I brought it up right next to the fence. Another key thing I added was the shepherd's hook. This right here, this is the shepherd's hook and the forks on the bottom of the shepherd's hook are partially underneath the stepping stone as well. The reason I positioned the shepherd's hook slightly underneath that stepping stone is because I wanted the top part of this shepherd's hook to be basically right over the center of my garden tower. In my mind, that was going to help me the most in regards to maintaining the swivel function. If I had it too far off to the side, it just seemed like that drip line was gonna be hitting the plants and there was gonna be no way around it. I've set up drip irrigation systems a few times in the past, so I was already familiar with this drip emitter line that has um, emitters every like six inches built in. And one of the main features of that line that enabled this design is the fact that it can be buried. So let's talk about what I did, starting from the head assembly. This is a three quarter inch PVC slip ball valve. Um, and then there's a, this is just an adapter that goes from a three quarter inch PVC slip to a male hose thread. This is the head assembly for a drip system. Right here we've got the backflow preventer there's three pieces, well four. This is the backflow preventer 
so it prevents any water from going backwards into the system, into the supply. And, um, sorry, let me. This is the backflow preventer that stops any water from going back into the supply. This is a filter so that you can protect your um, small drip parts from any debris that might be in the supply line. Even um, Although I've already, when this was off, I already flushed the system. I'll put a video of that flushing right now. And then we have the pressure regulator. This is absolutely necessary for a drip system because um, these button drippers and stuff will pop off if your PSI is too high. This is a 25 PSI, 30 would also work. And this is just another adapter that goes from this male hose thread to a half inch poly tubing. I got these, so I got this head assembly, all the supplies for this head assembly were purchased at Drip Depot. I'll put a link in the description box below um, to my affiliate link for Drip Depot along with all of the parts. We'll assemble this back together. It's the backflow preventer. And now I'll put this on there. So now I'm going to take my half inch poly tubing right here and press it onto my barbed connector. If this is a little bit too difficult for you, what you can do is um, soak the poly tubing, like dip it into a cup of warm water to soften it up and make it a little more pliable. This looks pretty good. I'll tighten it. This one actually has a... I'll tighten it down. What I'm going to do is... I'm going to allow the polytubing to stick up a little. And then... I'll put an end cap. This is a half inch end cap. This is where I'm going to put a half inch end cap. So the goal is to be discreet. I'm going to put it on this side of that so that I can draw it straight over here to the shepherd's hook. Need my little punch tool. I'm not sure how many T's I want. Oof. It's a little hard to do it at this angle. Okay. Got the barbed connector in. Got my quarter inch line. Right here you can see this is a quarter inch barbed connector that I've just poked into that half inch line. And this is one quarter inch poly tubing with no emitters. The poly tubing is what I have zip tied to the shepherd's hook. This is the zip tie. And see the quarter inch line follows the curve of the shepherd's hook much easier. I started trying to do it with a half inch poly tubing line, but it honestly just wanted to kink. And so I had to change my plan. And then right after the shepherd's hook, I've added a quarter inch barbed connector and added, this is one quarter inch poly tubing with emitters every, I believe every 12 inches. This is an emitter and follow the line. You'll see another one shortly. And this basically spirals all the way down through the soil. Entry point right here. Now buried all the way at the bottom 
this line is capped off with a quarter inch goof plug. Now let me show you a couple things that didn't quite work out maybe how I wanted them to. If you look closely, see in that pocket, you can actually see two drip lines here and here. And again, if we look up one level, you can see two as well. It was very difficult actually when I was filling the garden tower with soil to actually to actually try to space the circles or the spirals um, equally up the tower. And so I don't think it's equal at all. Um, but I think it's okay. There's probably also a lot of emitters in here, probably more than you would probably really need. But that being said, really all you have to do to fix that is just maybe run your system for a shorter amount of time than you would if you had fewer emitters. Um, and hopefully there's no negative effects down the line on like the roots of the plants. Speaking of the plants, let's take a look at how the strawberries are doing. About two weeks ago, I posted this video about planting bare root strawberries in Florida. And um, so now we're about two, two and a half weeks out from when I planted them. Let's check on the health of them. So they do say that you should expect probably like a 10 to 20% loss in bare root strawberry starts and not all of them will take whether it be because you did something wrong with planting, like you buried it too deep or something, or some other reason they just don't actually take. These ones on the top seem to be doing fairly well, but let's look at some of the ones that are not doing so hot. Um, this side looks all right. This one, I'm not really sure what's going on there. It's probably dying. The crown looks pretty brown. Same with this one, it looks pretty dead. Um, so that's two, three, four, maybe five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that looks like about 12 strawberry plants that didn't take, and I planted 40. So it's really probably closer to like a 30% loss, but that's okay. I'm confident I'm gonna get some runners out of these and be able to fill up those pockets again with the runner plants. I think it's time to turn the system on and see how it works. All right, let's take a closer look. It's on. Let me see. Oh yeah. The way the garden tower works is that any overflow from overwatering would come out in this drawer right here. This is probably too soon for water to come out here. Got a little too much mulch. And the idea is that you, that since this has run through the compost, Mason, the idea is that since this has probably run through the compost bin, you should be able to just dump it on top of the tower, circle that water back through. Let's look back at our requirements and see if we satisfied them. This is the view from my lanai, and I would say, check, visibly discreet. Requirement number two, retain the swivel function. Let's remember this first strawberry is right here. I'm going to swivel. All the way around. This is that same strawberry. Check. Requirement number three is automatic watering. This right here is the Orbit Beehive. This is my controller that I use for my reclaimed water, which powers my garden tower and my raised bed. The way that I program the system is by using an app.
There you have it. That's how I've designed my drip irrigation system in my garden tower too. Let me know in the comments below if this has inspired you to try to think about a creative design that you could do in your own garden. See you next time, guys.